But we can use the same technology to also do some interesting interaction techniques. And one of the um, areas we've been working on um, in the last eight or nine years is this notion of tangible augmented reality. So the idea is you take tangible user interface input techniques and you blend them with augmented reality display techniques. And the basic one-liner is you use physical objects to interact with real um, AR content. So as an example of how you do that, we envisioned a uh, IKEA catalogue of the future. So the idea is in the future, IKEA sends you the catalogue, you open the catalogue, you can see uh, virtual furniture popping out of the catalogue, and then you can arrange the furniture as you like in your own little house. Um, so this, is a, this is shows it working here. Uh, you can't see what he's seeing because it's all on the headset display, but um, it, um, it's obvious he's taking things from the book and putting it on the piece of paper. So let's look inside and see what he's, what he's doing. Okay, so here's the book, and on the pages of the book, there's all this furniture. On the big piece of paper, it's an empty room, and then you can take the pedal, and when you put the pedal over the piece of furniture, it executes a copy function, copies the furniture, and you tilt it, it has some physics, so you can slide the desk off, then you can push the desk around a little bit to arrange it how you like it, and um, okay, there's the desk in the corner of your room. So it's a quite a complex task to arrange a 3D scene, and you can see he's doing it with just a, a, a paddle made of cardboard with no mouse or keyboard or anything like that. So it shows the benefit of having this real tangible physical um, input. Doesn't like that one, so he just throws it away. And he takes the second rug and puts it down beside the second rug, doesn't like that one, that clashes with the couch. So he can hit it and it goes away. So the idea is that by using physical objects to interact with AR content, um, again with the AR toolkit markers on the objects, you can build very, very intuitive interfaces. Now, of course, um, what you want to do when you built your house is you want to go inside it and you want to experience it at life size. So the next thing we did is we developed something called the Magic Book. And the idea of the Magic Book was very simple. Is you could take a real book you can normally read, um, and then with an augmented reality system, you can see virtual content popping out of the page of the book. And then when you find a scene you want, of course, you can fly inside the scene and become part of the content. So you can transition from the real world through to an immersive virtual reality. So this is also a collaborative interface. So of course, um, people can read books um, together and frequently do read them together. So you'll see my friend Bruce and I reading this book um, together. And uh, there we go. It's a Japanese, so that's why we're opening it from the back to the front and so forth. And then what we can do is we can take a, a augmented reality display and look through the um, handset of the display and see um, augmented reality content. And just like with the UFO and the alien, we can both see it from our own perspective and it appears um, popping out of the page there. So here we are looking through our little handheld displays and um, looking a little goofy, but anyway. Every second page is a, um, is a scene that you can fly into. And um, so here's the scene, and you click a button, you fly inside the page, and now you become immersed inside the virtual reality um, experience of, of the page. Now, when you turn your body in the real world, you can turn around and you can see um, the virtu immersive virtual reality scene in the real world, and you can push a button on the handheld display and you can fly in the direction that you're looking. Now, this is a collaborative interface, so when I fly into the scene, my buddy who's um, looking at the augmented reality scene on the book, he can see me as a little person in the, in the scene now. Right, so here's me in the virtual world. And this is, as, I, as I move through the world, um, my um, body moves around. And then in order to keep the metaphor consistent, when I'm in the immersive virtual world, I should be able to look up into the sky and see my friend looking down at me as this big kind of godlike uh, person. <laughs> and I can look up and see my friend um, who looks just like me because we are on a budget. Um, in the, and, and as he moves in the real world, um, his um, head moves around as well. And of course, he can also come in and be in the immersive VR world with me too and fly in and we can um, play together. So we were having so much fun with that that we um, released the software and made it open source. It turns out a lot of people like that, and since 2004 we've had 200,000 downloads of this piece of software. It's the second most popular um, computer vision application on SourceForge. We're getting about eight to 10,000 downloads a month right now. But it turns out most people don't want to look like this to have an AR experience. So if you want to bring AR to the masses, you've got to look at other things as well. And um, most recently we've taken that same software and we've ported it over to the mobile phone. It turns out to have an AR experience, you just need a camera, a processor, and a display. And almost all mobile phones, like this one, have a camera, a processor, and a display on it. So in the last couple of years ago, we took that software, ported it to the mobile phone, and here you can see on a normal commodity mobile phone, a little 3D model um, appearing on, on your phone. Now that's significant because this year there'll be a billion mobile phones sold with cameras, processors, and displays in them. 
oh, and this is a little tennis game we developed, the world's first collaborative AR game on a mobile phone. So you sit across the table with a piece of paper between you, and you can see a virtual tennis court, and you can play tennis uh, together. And of course, because it's a phone, when you hit the ball, you can hear the sound of a ball being hit, and also the phone vibrates um, as well, so you get some tactile feedback. Now, the nice thing about putting things into the, into the public domain is that other people take your software and do really cool stuff with it. So it turned out there was a guy in Japan called Sakusha. I don't think that's his real name, but anyway. And Sakusha took the AI toolkit software and he ported it to Flash. And that's really amazing because now when you've got it ported to Flash, it means you can develop um, AR experiences that you can experience with the web by millions of people. So this is the live demo. Um, so here's Build AR. It's completely free. You can download it and use it for yourself. And what Build AR lets you do is um, make your own little AR scene. So here's my little marker. Um, right now I've got a blue cube on my hero name tag. And I can click on it and do some things like uh, move it around and that type of stuff. I can do this one, which is a scale to make it bigger or smaller. I'll scale along this way. Thinner. Okay. So that's um, one object. Um, you can also add more objects. So here's a second marker. This one has nothing on it yet, so what we can do is we can say we want to make it active, so we click this button here, we click this here, go to here, and there. Okay, now we've got a little cube, but that's kind of boring. So because I'm from New Zealand, I want to put a, um, a sheep on here. So we'll click on this, and we can go to... Mm, this might be dangerous, let's see what happens. Oh, there we go. And so there's a little sheep um, running around. <laughs> He's moving very fast, isn't he? Um, so... <laughs> Let me make him a bit bigger. Okay, oops, now he's gone. Oh, he became very small. There we go. There we go. Good. And um, on the other one here, um, also because I'm from New Zealand, we can put a, um, a kiwi on there. Okay, there's a kiwi bird. And um, then we can hit this button here and um, it goes full screen. So in just a few minutes, you've made your own little AR um, demo. And you can save it out and then reload it um, again. So basically, um, obviously you can't tile the world with little black and white uh, squares. So a lot of people are doing some very interesting research on natural feature tracking, where they can take normal pictures and track off, and that's what you're seeing in the research community now, and we're doing some work on that in New Zealand as well. You also, the other what's next thing is to take that technology and deploy it on, on a massive scale. So what you want to be able to do is walk around, um, well, this is Helsinki, but walk around um, town and see all these annotations appearing over the real world. So your friend, Juzmo, might have gone to this burger place and he's left this tag here saying, burgers and wrappers are awful, avoid at all costs. So um, we're doing research in that area, basically taking um, web 2.0 technology and blending it with handheld devices and with um, uh, feeds from Flickr and other um, subscriber services to lose your mobile phone as a portal into massive amounts of content. So just to conclude, um, Developing augmented reality for the masses and letting anybody build an AR experience is all about delivering to existing platforms. So delivering to the web or to mobile phones. It's about building easy to use tools and it's about providing a magical user experience. However, there's an alternative motive for me giving this talk and that's to reflect on the process itself. And so the lessons that I learned by doing this, first of all, is follow your passions. You know, I saw Star Trek or Star Wars when I was an eight-year-old, and that stuck with me, and through my life, I wanted to create, recreate the Star Wars experience. Then you need to find playmates that are smarter than you. And I found Hirokato, and he was really smarter than me, and he helped build the software. Solve important problems. We solved the tracking problem, the interaction problem. Share your tool, toys. So we, we built the software library. We shared it up to other people, and we've now got more than 200,000 people using that software. Build tools that people can use, like the Build AR. And finally, most importantly, is make magic and um, show some really amazing um, demonstrations that can inspire people to do um, better than what you've done yourself. So I know now that you all want to do this for yourself. So go to this website tonight download Build AR and um, build your own little sheep and uh, kiwis. Or if you're a bit more ambitious, you can try and uh, use um, AR Toolkit and build some um, nice um, AR applications as well. So thank you very much for your time. <laughs>